Hi, my name is Han, founder and CEO of Gina AI. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to use Gina to build a multi-modality document search. Gina is an easier way to build numerous search on the cloud. I always call it TensorFlow for search. If you haven't used Gina before, I would recommend you to try out Gina Hello World demos, where we use Gina to build simple fashion article search and a QA chatbot. To run those demos, simply install Gina via pip, and then run Gina Hello Amnist or Gina Hello Chatbot in your terminal. OK, now let's move on to the topic of this episode, multimodality document search. Multimodality represents that the content of a document is beyond one data type. For example, a PDF document can contain both image and text. Therefore, it has two modalities. A movie clip with subscript has three modalities, image, audio, and text. Indexing and searching multimodality document in Gina is easy and straightforward. In the SQL, we shall see how to leverage the new features introduced in Gina 1.0 to build a multi-model search solution. If you haven't upgraded your Gina to the latest version, please do pip install minus u Gina in your terminal. The dataset we are using is called People Image from Kaggle. It contains 2000 images and their captions. We can consider each image caption pair as a multimodal document. We will use Gina to index those 2000 documents and then, given a multimodal document query, found the related documents. Let's see how it works. First, you need to build flows, specifically two flows, one for indexing, one for searching. Flow is a high-level concept in Gina. It orchestrates multiple components in a search system to accomplish a task. Gina provides three ways to build a flow. You can use Python API, YAML config, or interactive dashboard. Each has its own advantages and niche. Here we are using YAML config. The YAML config of our index flow looks like the following. It first segments the incoming data and then diverges the flow into three pathways. The first pathway works on text modality. It filters the data by its MIME type, uses the text encoder to represent the content into embeddings, and finally stores the embedding and meta information into an indexer. The implementation of filter, encoder, and indexer are specified by the keyword uses, which we will give a closer look later. The second pathway repeats the procedure for image modality. The third pathway simply stores the original document into an indexer. Finally, it waits until all three pathways have finished. Note that the three pathways work in parallel. To see that more clearly, you can load this flow YAML into Python via flow.loadconfig and then plot it. If you are using JupyterLab or Notebook, then it automatically renders the flow for you. Our query flow is very similar to the index flow. The two pathways take care of the respective modalities. Finally, we jointly rank them and retrieve the original document from the indexer. You may notice that we don't have the common pre-processing step as in the index flow. This is because in the index time, we are reading data from the disk. Therefore, a simple I.O. operation is required. In the query time, however, the client sends data directly to Gina via REST API. Hence, it is not required. Now that we have the two flows, let's deep dive into each component to see what is exactly behind the YAML file that's specified by the uses keyword. Let's take a closer look at the encoders. We are using Transformer Torch encoder and Image Torch encoder for representing text and images into embeddings. In the YAML file, this is defined by the first line that starts with a bound mark. These two encoders are from GinaHub. In GinaHub, 
We and the community have provided many classic deep learning encoders for you to use out of the box. The arguments of the encoder is defined by the with keyword. The request keyword defines how the encoder behaves under different types of request. In Gina, the request type can be index, search, update, delete, train, and control. For all executors, we have defined the default request behavior. You can inherit them by setting uses default to true. This helps you focus on the request types that you want to customize. Each executor needs some drivers to work under the network request. For the encoder, you need an encode driver. The driver is a unique concept in Gina. It separates the algorithm unit from the request passing. This allows the executor developers to focus on the algorithm itself without worrying too much about the network and all the other things. We also have two types of indexer, one for storing meta information and one for storing vector indexer. The meta information indexer uses binary PB indexer, which is a simple key value storage using memory map. Under the request field, we do some cleaning to remove unnecessary information before storing. To store both vector and meta information, we can use the compound indexer, which combines the vector indexer and the key value indexer into one. You can use drivers to define the logic order between them. You can also define your own executor and then use it in the YAML file. Take a look at our ranker. We build a simple weighted ranker in path slash weighted ranker.py. Then we use it in the YAML file by specifying metas.py modules. When the flow starts, it automatically loads this weighted ranker class from the Python file. Other YAML files are organized similarly. I will skip them in this episode, but I highly recommend you to read them and see if you can understand them. Now that we have everything ready, let's do indexing and querying. We open the flow using the context manager and then feed the data into the flow using index CSV. This is a new feature added in 1.0. The indexing will take about two minutes on a CPU machine. After it is done, we can now open the query flow. By default, Gina uses gRPC for communication. In this example, we will send the query from the JavaScript in a web page. Hence, we need to switch the gateway to the REST. Now open the web page. You can send a multimodal query from the left panel. You can drag the slider to change which modality the result should focus on. You can also change the text to see how the result changed accordingly. I hope this simple demo gives you a taste on Gina and how it works on multimodality search. But I merely scratched the surface of Gina. The full power of Gina is unlimited. If you are interested in knowing more about Gina, you can check out our GitHub repository, our documentation website, and join our Slack channel. In the next episode, I will deep dive into more features. So stay tuned and happy searching.